I'm Turkish and sorry about my already an accent uh, and it's I'm not fluent but I'm very fluent in gamification design don't worry about it <laughs> so which is which is very important so yeah um, hopefully you will all already have a good sessions and such a good talk I'll, I already uh, listened some of them uh, enjoyed the sessions in the morning sessions and the first day so let me introduce first myself then I like to be introduced um, some details of game design and gamification terms. And it will be like in one and a half hour, like in more than one hour, we will do three exercise together. So uh, you need some papers and pen and maybe phone. Uh, so we can do some drawing, as you can see. So that's very important for understand that the gamification design methodology for you in this sessions but at the beginning more than 20 minutes i'm going to share some theories because i'm a lecturer in several university in istanbul so it's very important to understand what we are talking about what is the hook design what is the journey design what is player journey who is players what is persona these are very important questions so we should be engaged and arrange our knowledge uh, with these methodologies so let me start with my uh, presentation and like I told you, maybe you already heard about our uh, presentation and you will maybe have my presentation already, but we will able to share every slides with you. Uh, don't worry about it. So let's start with, like I told you for 20 minutes uh, about myself. Um, I'm lecturing in Bahçeşehir and Bilgi University in Istanbul. And also, I am representing of GameFed. Maybe you should check about GameFed YouTube channel and GameFed website. This is an international gamification federation, and we have a representing from India too. And they are all local experts, gamification experts, represent their country in GameFed. And we are we used to be before pandemic organizing a gamification meetup, gamification hackathon, gamification Turkey kind of events and uh, also gamification europe uh, organizing by gamefed too so i am a member of this non-profit organization and and, and i'm i'm doing lots of uh, gamification keynote speaking and design consulting in turkey uh, for uh, every kind of uh, companies and yes this is how we like to be give an ice cream if you ever been in istanbul uh, we as a turkish nation we love games let me say it this way we love games in the street, we love games in school, we love games in government. <laughs> so we are very famous about our games. So uh, this is actually, it's onboarding uh, gamification, not with uh, while you are eating, you can have your comfort way, but while you are onboarding to have an ice cream in Istanbul, you should experience this kind of things. Let's start with the, uh, what is game, what is play and what is work. As you can see, um, let me introduce you to playing games, what we understand from playing games and motivational levels of that. A work is what you have to do, uh, and it's all about profit and the productivity focus. But play and games, actually, it's all about focus on intrinsic motivation, collaboration, and uh, fun. It's very important, functional fun. And I really love to be uh, giving some uh, reference to from Daniel Pink. If you ever heard about him, uh, you already maybe know his Drive uh, book. The the call is Drive. Probably it's in India too. And um, please take a note of his name. And he's a great guy. And I mean he's still doing lots of um, consultancy to the companies uh, about um, entrepreneurship and also um, creating a startup culture in the company, uh, kind of. So th these are all, as you know, it's not uh, happening with all money. You cannot pay too much money and find a good startup, you know. It's not about money, it's about interesting motivation. So Daniel Ping in his TED talk, he says play is a voluntary work and work is a mandatory play because we are doing lots of actually work like a playful experience, but we have to. But while we are trying to do some, create a painting that, uh, wall or uh, creating a composing the music for example we never think that's a could be a work too so that's a very thin line between work and play 
and he's giving three things for creating intrinsic motivation in the company. So what's actually, I call gamification sacred sauce, but he's giving three things representing to self-determination theory. Maybe you ever heard about self-determination theory first time. Um, uh, the colleagues from Columbia University called De um, Ryan and Desi, Richard Ryan and Edward Desi. They, they are actually students of Abraham Maslow and Harry Harlow, and they create these theories called self-determination theory. So people are not motivated long-term with money. People are motivated actually for um, intrinsic motivation with autonomy first. And the second was a mastery. The third one is the purpose. So in gamification, uh, Luke, we call autonomy actually persona. Who is the target audience? How they can find their password? How they can start the game? How they can easily start the game? You know, then the green box, what are the levels? What are the phases for a design level? Uh, it could be what could be easy for onboarding, what could be next week, what could be daily strike, something like that. And what about the end of it? It could be a purpose, you know, even Super Mario saving princess, you know. Yes, it's, it was all fun, the jumping around and going around, but it has to be end of day. It could be a hero's journey, you know, it could be a transformation and our players can have to be transformed into heroes, okay? So this is our three main things why you are trying to be uh, carefully about game design and gamification design, which is actually same thing, but it depends on the business objectives. Let me introduce you to some emotion of games because it's very important for us to understand why we are, why we are playing a game. It's not about only positive, emotions okay so i am going to give some minutes to do you understand what is the emotions of the games but uh, this is the uh, philip toledano he's a dutch photographer and he got a huge um some photos about uh, people who play uh, digital games and as you can see uh, people are not only positive motivated also they feel some negative things too I am opening chat part. Please type a, just one word, describe this lady's emotions. Just only one word. Scared, yeah. You know, you, let's, let's, you never say in daily life, you know, let's, let me scare, let myself scare to let's play this game, you know. But yes, play games are doing that integrated, amazed, surprised. Yeah, that's very nice. Let me go to second one with the shiny glasses and super hair. And what does, what is his emotion? What could be excited? Excited, blown away. Surprised. These are all, all positive rare. What about him? One word. Uh, can I pass this level? I think I have no weapon left. I should find some leaves from here, something like that. Disgust. <laughs> yeah. Let's, you know, you never say that. Let, I want to discuss something. I want to play a game. <laughs> but games are doing that. Okay. So in our kitchen, uh, we need this kind of uh, emotions and this guy what to think about it unhappy yeah it's not a post positive yeah disappointment he's thinking something how can i pass this bridge for example how can i stall this car something like that thinking yeah let me Pass very quickly the last one and yeah this is my favorite you know imagine yourself like this maybe while we are playing maybe we <laughs> we are transformation to heroes like this evil yeah <laughs> find your evil inside of you with these games this is very important um, as you can see games are 
for example, think about it, you should cross a bridge. When you go to the bridge, you just focus on the bridge and you see the old road is okay. Let me walk through the bridge. Then it's collapsed, okay? Ah, what happened to the bridge? I was just passing it, okay? I think I can go around with it, you know? Then you started to think about it. You start to think about it. Then you try, you have to jump like a huge jump to cross the bridge because it's already collapsed, okay? Then you go back and you're just going there and you just feel happy if you can able to go there and enjoy your time. Yeah, this is what games are doing us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And it's very clear to understand the octalysis model, uh, which is my uh, thesis actually in my university. And he's a, a Taiwanese guy called Yu Kai Cho. He created uh, all emotions separate with the eight core emotions. So when you game design, when you play a game, when you create a gameful experience for a hiring, for increased sales, for completion to training, you have to focus a core drive. If you can balance the all emotions, upside is, is positive, like meaning. I like to play this game. All my friends playing Roblox, I need to play. This is a meaning, okay? Accomplished, as you can see, the second one. I collect this bridge i pass this bridge okay creativity you can update your avatar for example or you can complete your uh, clubhouse profile for example putting some emoji on top you, it's it's about creativity and it makes you more depends to the portal okay ownership like follower follower accounts or um, having some status on there too and also social influence, you know, uh, you like to be share, look, which kind of experience I got. Do you like to join the club? This kind of stuff. And what makes more adaptive and sustain is all about black hat. They call black hat motivation, negative emotions, scarcity, like cutter, like less three seat. And <laughs> I think this, a COVID situation, you know, um, there is not too many vaccines. So everyone tried to be finding, did you have Russian? Did you have Chinese? Did you have uh, Pfizer's? This is all about scarcity. How many you got, how many might um, predictability is about, you know, um, gift box, you know, or rolling something or dice. We love it, okay? We love unpredictability. And avoidance, it's like a punishment. If you don't do this, you will level down. Or I will take this batch back. Or I will uh, cut your um, some uh, benefits. You cannot able to log in the system. You cannot uh, collect the rewards. You cannot open the uh, reward store, for example. Kind of avoidance, okay? So when you try to create some gameful experience, please take a note of that, okay? Even think about Kahoot. Even think about Menti. Think about Super Mario. You can put every game mechanics and rules, these eight core drive, and it has to be not only positive or not only the negative. You know, it's not a prison. It's not a jail, okay? So it has to be balanced, okay? And that's very important uh, to us. While these are all, all important, let me uh, help you with the Gabe's equipment codes, okay? So he's a... Uh, one of the famous gamification gurus and gamification experts in the world. And if you want to invite him, I can be make a connection with you too. And he's a great guy. And he tell that I think gamification is more likely psychology. More than 75 percentage of gamification design is all about emotions. It's all about personas. Who is the target audience? Who is my customer? Who is my employer? Okay. And the rest of them, like a badge design, UI design, UX design, push notification, reporting, uh, mobile app, and responsive website, or Unity, whatever the technology you prefer to use is the rest of that. Okay. Even without technology, 
even with uh, stickers or magnet, you know, in your company, uh, as I see in the Turkey too, many agile coach using a magnet and sticker and post it, they gamify all process, testing process without technology, zero technology. And it works if you design well, if you design with the fun, it, if you use some unpredictability and if you put some scarcity on that, for example, testing process, and you, if you can complete your test process more than one day, I will give you 100 points more. You got one week, it means that seven times 100 points, you can collect more points if you do today, not the last day. Okay, this is a real example. And if you can collect points like this, and if you put the points on the board of a company, the all test process going up. So it is without technology, even you can do some psychological tricks and using some post-its and mailing and some photos and this kind of very primitive tools increase the sales. So let me introduce you, uh, we will do this together uh, after 20 minutes, like I told you, I will give you uh, actually the, the introduction to the gamification. And I use Andres Warczewski's core principles. Maybe you never heard about this uh, before, but it's very useful for everyone. Let me say everyone, because we a little bit mix about this too, because even some simulations like earthquake simulations or flight simulations are not actually gamification. They are, st they are standing at the red part, okay? So as you can see, um, Andres putting purpose at top and uh, I'm going to ask you about giving four examples end of my uh, lecturing. I am just five minutes later. I will think about, let me think, let me tell you think about uh, finding an, one example for your own life, your own life, okay? So Andres put purpose at top and the fun at bottom, okay? And right side, have a gameplay time. Like, you know, I got simulation more than 20 times. Or I play Minecraft more than hard, okay? It has got a play time. What about the, without gameplay? It, no gameplay, you have to collect points. You have to increase your test time. You have to use chair, use steps, whatever you have to put some target, collect garbage, then games continue, no gameplay, okay? Let me start with the games, with the purple part. It's pure game, it's just for fun. It has got paid play time. Uh, it could be a Minecraft, it could be Street Fighter, FIFA, you know, all digital or physical games, backgammon, chess, are representing purple part. It's not bad or good, okay? Four of them is great. They are all family, but are different brothers and sisters, okay? Like India and like Turkey, think about this way, okay? We are all in the same world, okay? But the game's purpose are fun, which is great, but it's, they have no purpose like uh, put off weight or increase steps, something like that, okay? What about the orange part? Orange part is game inspired, playful experience, you know, you can put in some paper and throw to the garbage. It's not like no gameplay. There is no playing time. I am playing a garbage play. No, but it needs some game mechanics and playful experience with that. It is for fun. Give me a high five. Give me, uh, I don't know, this kind of one behavior things are representing at orange part. No gameplay, high five, throwing something, jumping, something like that. And it, but it's all about fun, you know. What about the app? Actually, today I'm going to talk and give these areas examples. I am lecturing in series games and gamification. But like, like I told you, um, series games like education games um, and simulations, flight simulations are serious games. It uses game mechanics, it has game time, but it has a purpose, you know. Flight simulator has a purpose. It's not for fun. They need to be learned, you know, uh, and they you have to be uh, learned something educated well with the playing. Then you can uh, you, uh, putting some effort on the real play, playing too. Okay, 
earthquake simulators or virtual reality simulations. These are all serious game part. It has got a purpose. It's not for fun. And you can use all game mechanics inside too. What about the no gameplay? You can use badge leaderboard like a Duolingos or a Salesforce or a Fitbit kind of. You have to have steps. You have to increase your steps. You have to memorize the word. The games continue with the uh, real life ex exercise, real life entertainment. Okay. And it has got a purpose. Gamification, um, using game mechanics to the existing real life. Their term, their very popular term, uh, gamification is all about actually happening in the real life with the game full mechanics. So, exercise one. Exercise one. I want to have you draw like this for part and I like to give you 15 minutes okay and in your daily routine what games you are playing please write here okay the purple one what game inspired things you are doing for example throwing a K at to your friends something like that you know playful experience okay putting to the orange part okay what about have you ever experienced a service game before? It could be training simulation, flight simulation, earthquake simulation, virtual reality simulation, 360 New York Times Square experience. These are all service games, okay? Put some experience to here and try to find a real gamification experience for yourself to left button, okay? This is going to be stay here. And if you have any question, you can ask from chatbot and I will give you 15 minutes. We will back in uh, 15 minutes, okay? I'm waiting your examples, go on. Uh, Erkin, would you like, uh, would you like me to put everybody in breakout rooms or are we doing it individually? They can do individually, yeah. Okay. okay. And any question, please use chat part. Do not disturb the other ones.
All right. So, Erkan, uh, I've created the uh, map here. So, let's start with the games first. I mean, you can see I've written a lot, I guess. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> because You're I'm a... Uh, boy. Exactly. I've been in the industry for... Uh, in gaming industry for quite good years, for five, six years. So, as far as uh, uh, the physical games are concerned, I'm playing three games uh, nowadays on and off. One is playing the cards... Uh, we play Rami and all. And the second one is chess and the third one is Indian Ludo. Have you ever heard of it? Ludo? Yes. yes. Awesome. If, awesome. You, if you can uh, show some examples at the end of the session, that will be great. Awesome. I will definitely do that. Rubik's Cube is also there. I mean, I quite, I'd like to play with it. And I'm a, a fanboy of platformers. So my I like old arcade games like Bomberman, Icelander, <laughs> Mario and stuff. I also play Street Fighter quite a lot. Uh, plants, uh, plants versus Zombies and Contra and Puzzle is also a genre which I like the most. I've worked on few puzzle games as well in my career. All right, as far as uh, the serious games are concerned, like uh, the plat... Uh, so I have done uh, Farmville. Will you consider that as a simulator? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, of course. Roller Coaster Tycoon. There are different simulators I've worked on professionally, such as Goat Simulator, Cafe Simulator, uh, Beauty Simulator, and all that stuff. Uh, they, they used to be games on Facebook. Zynga used to produce that at times. And uh, as far as the game inside playful design is concerned, I'm not sure whether they can, you, you're going to consider it or not, but I'm going to tell you and the rest of the audience. One is that I'm skipping every day with my younger brother. I'm doing skipping and that's a competition sort of thing. I mean, who can skip more? He is younger to me, but yeah, there is a competition. Plus I'm doing terrace gardening. I mean, I'm, I've been, I've started that after the lockdown. So I consider that as a game, uh, just like farm villa. I'm putting some seeds and all, I'm watering it and flowers coming up, right? And uh, the gamification, very important stuff. I mean, nowadays, every every software, every edtech pl platform is providing you some points, some, you know, brownie things so that you can get some certifications and all. So I have been doing some games on different MOOC platforms, such as Udemy, Coursera, Udacity. So on completing uh, their courses, you get some points. And when you collect those points, you get a certificate at the end. So this is what I'm doing right now and everything has been written here. I guess it's available, it's viewable. Yes, we can see it and well done, well done. Uh, Thank you. Please, everyone, do some more and optimize, give some claps to him. Thank you, guys. Even some reaction. I mean, at the gardening part for uh, Sunny, the gardening part, if you open the music and if you do it with dancing, if you mm -hmm. create some gameful experience with get gardening, that will be a hundred percent good example. But if you do the gardening, uh, you know, without purpose and mm -hmm. like feel like, you know, you have to do it less like a work, not like mm -hmm. a play, like a work, uh, that will be not gameful inspired and uh, try okay. to be like, you know, upside. I'd be love to bottom side. I would maybe, say, I would say it's giving me uh, the pleasure. I mean, gardening is also, you know, associated with the pleasure. People have been treating themselves from various psychological things by, you know, connecting to plants. So that is what I have tried so far. And I'm not doing it as a normal day work. I'm doing it for my pleasure. So that's why I wrote it down. And I, I do listen like to music that. while doing it. That's great. It's like, it's like more like work than play than. Uh, please note Sawyer effect. Maybe you heard about um, Tom Sawyer. Uh, classic book mm -hmm. and it's if you if you read the novel uh, you can understand what i'm saying to you sure. and the they I'm call it sawyer effect you know in in daily routine uh, you don't have to be pleasure everything you know we have to do something like uh, we have to do but you can turn and transform and this work experience to the playful experience with music with fun, with dance, you know, you have to do that boring stuff, boring exercise, but you can add some extra lever like Tom Sawyer do, 
um, then it will be more playful experience. Let me say it this way. Okay. Thank you for your sharing. Any comments to him or anyone more? Just one more. Uh, I person. want to share. Go on, Paru. So um, for uh, games, a um, lot of board games, uh, Monopoly. Uh, I just want to add a few like badminton, crossword. Cool. Uh, yeah. So there are some of the games. Some of them uh, he, Sunny has already mentioned. Uh, for serious games, um, so I used to, when I was younger, I wanted to learn how to type. So there was a typing game in which there was a frog, which would, you know, uh, if you type wrong, he will swallow one of the key. So <laughs> his tongue would come out and he would swallow the key. So I, <laughs> that was like nice. a purposeful game. But that really helped me in, you know, typing well. Then recently, I was, you know, uh, looking for these cognitive ability games. Uh, you know, where you have to remember uh, a picture is there, you know, two pictures are there, what has changed. And it's on the phone. It has an app is there. Brain so, games. We call it brain games. Yeah. Yeah, brain game. And uh, when I was learning to drive, so car simulation, you literally sit and, you know, there's a car simulation. Uh, for uh, playful uh, design, uh, so when I go for uh, morning walk and run, I listen to music and I have a knee, uh, you know, uh, so my physiotherapist has suggested that, you know, have to run for four minutes and then one minute of walk. So I put music, you know, as, you know, as per that timing. So I change music as per that time. So I kind of uh, enjoy doing that. <laughs> I guess okay. bored, you know, the same, you know, you're walking, running, so that gets boring. Uh, for gamification, I have three, uh, three games. So there is a meditation app, uh, which has this, you know, day one, you do this, day one, you do that, uh, day two, you do that. So meditation app, uh, Duolingo, as you also mentioned. And the third one is a habit app, you know, it says that for 21 days, you know, or 30 days, I will not eat chocolate. So you keep <laughs> nice, nice. That's so great. then you come back to zero most of the time, you know, because you are not able to. So it uh, helps you, you know, every day you are going update that. So that's my gamification. That's great. Let's do the same clap to her too. Hello. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thank you for your time. If you share on the social media, uh, I can also share uh, the all examples because I like to your notes, uh, Sunny and my friend uh, yeah what and other ones i know that is because of time constitution uh, everyone wants to share their examples but we have to talk to more examples so we have to focus on but if you want me to see that you can use twitter you can find me over there you can find me on instagram so you can share with that too with me it's my mission and the agile talks uh, social media accounts too so let me continue this is very important so we understand what is gamification and as you can see not a, while you are doing a fitness app if you earn badge it's gamification but if you are just dancing um, it's just a playful experience or if you play a games you know it's not a gamification so we if we understand what is gamification gamification is always start with human you know because like a diet uh, or without a, choosing a car it depends to human you know Yes, we got a business target, <laughs> put off weight, but you know, everyone has their own way to have some diet, right? So it's like a gamification too. Some people love Duolingo, but some people that doesn't care about these badges, okay? So they prefer to use other kind of uh, gameful experience or maybe some serious games. Serious games sometimes more powerful than gamification, let me say it this way. So like a human-centric design, human-centric design is going to be a very popular word because we are right now all, always doing the functional-centric design. We are just running app and we don't think about people. Everyone, include this room, everyone has to use same application, but everyone, their own learning abilities, own learning and, and, and focus and attention span, okay? So we always think about empathy in gamification. It's very close to design thinking at left bottom. Uh, if you ever work on design thinking, you are very welcome to work with and design and gamification design too, because they are all very similar. 
but design thinking create for a product gamification using this product to the people you know how these people can use this product so it's very close ideas design thinking for product gamification for people to so how to use that okay so you can put end of the design five steps design thinking methodology too we call it player persona so when we have a business target like increase sales complete trainings or decrease the test time kind of business what is the problem what is motivational problem that they cannot able to do that so there are two types of persona you can note that the first one while we are starting at the beginning of the uh, project you know project mean gamification design that they call proto persona proto persona is has to be maximum three it could be two even one and it's all about we call stakeholder. I mean the CEOs or who is your sponsor, who is paying the money, or who is supporting you do to gamification design. So they have some ideas. Yeah, we got a workers, we got a customers. We want to sell coffee to them. They have uh, workers and they have a time like between uh, these days during these days kind of some ideas. But most of them, let me say friends, you too, most of their ideas are wrong. Okay, because they live in their plazas, they live in their rooms, they never make a touch the employee, they never make a connection with the customer. So at the beginning, we took this proto persona, we make our gamification design, but when we're ready to launch design, we always do a player persona, real person persona. You know, Sunny, my friend, this is our gameful experience. This is our reward. This is our point system. This is our bet system. This is our level system. This is our uh, unpredictability system, you know, team building system um, and surprising system. Do you like to play this game? How you, how you feel like this? So this is a real player persona. So do you have time for this gamification? What is kind of, what kind of um, reward they like? So we put these three proto persona and we started to asking questions. This is a real persona from my project. It's all Turkish, but I just translate a couple questions for you. You know, when you like to play this game over mobile phone or over your desktop, when you have a less time a recognition, recognition from your customer, recognition from your manager, or you collect points. Yes, you got more than 10,000 points, but do you like to charity? Do you like to use for your daughter? Do you like to put a uh, use for your team building? Go into cinema or something like that, okay? We, all, we always ask this human-centric question to them. Then, as you can see the example, this is the real life example, uh, a store, a workers. We go there, we show the game, we show the KPIs. And do you like to play this game? how they can play, why they can play. They cannot say to the customer, they cannot say to the manager, they can say to you as an interview. Research is very important and persona, as you can see the player persona here is very long. And please update the gamification scenarios. Don't follow the same at the beginning. Please update it in daytime. The second exercise, is going to be about faces. I call it faces because I represent from uh, the Stanford uh, lecturer called Amy Joachim. How the game starts and how it will be end, how it's going to be on top two. Let's start with the player journey. Um, it's very important. I and in actually in daily life, even a buying a car, you know, even a, um, having a cat, you know, it has these four levels. Okay. What's cats for me? Or what kind of car or house or mobile phone should I buy? Okay, that's called discovery part. What is it? What is inside of Clubhouse, for example? Okay, this is a, you never experienced that car. You never been in Clubhouse. You never have a cat before. That's a discovery part. Okay, what about the onboarding? All game design and gameful experience, gameful experience, Given a very easy job, ready to be first seller of your 
branch, okay, for e-commerce. Are you ready to buy uh, first shoes from our shoe store? You never buy a shoes from our store. If you do that, we give a discount, like a kind of small steps on boarding. Okay. What about the habit building? Like a fitness kind of, you know, what we are going to do tomorrow. You collect one week. Let's make this week best week. Let's make this Friday best Friday. Enter the mobile application five days track. What about the habit building? And it's never enough. What about the mastery part? Okay, mastery part. Do you like to decide that which product is going to be have discount on this e-commerce? You can do that. Do you like to create some combine this e-commerce so people can buy with your name and you can make a charity with that? This is our real examples from Turkey. So this is Amy Jo Kim website. Please note Game Thinking IO. If you have, if you are, um, if you're good at English, I think that will be more knowledge and more uh, reference in this website, Game Thinking IO. But we are going to give. I'm going to give some example, and I want to do think about. Uh, we will going to be four phases. Given an example for your real life, even a, like I told you, having a cat, buying a car, or given a, a download the clubhouse kind of. Uh, example. Let me give you an example from our uh, real example before the pandemic. This is a, actually a portal called Doge. We didn't give every player their password to do portal. We said, are you the Excel Ninja? If you go to Excel, you can have this badge, go to ask your password. This is all discovery part. Are you a CRM grandmaster? You think that you use Serra more than every other customer more, go this portal and find your uh, badge, kind of. You have to be like a, actually commercial, like a, a marketing, like, a, you know, the, life is all about marketing. We are self-marketing, you're doing lots of self-marketing too. So on discovery part, you know, bring your friends like invitation. I will give you more invitation, which you are right now club I was doing invitation you know and giving some invitation limit you know that's a very gainful experience on onboarding make curiosity make excitement about it and when they enter the application you have to give very easy task you have to give very easy task ways giving this is a actually navigation uh, application uh, probably it's very popular in india too please download the ways and try to use it in two uh, of hopefully after pandemic if you derive lots and they give a pacifier to your avatar this is a very good gamification techniques they put a pacifier to your avatar and say you have to collect 60 per 60 points And if you want to ask a question, other members, you know, you have to collect 60 points. Then you can update your profile. You know, you, you can leave this pacifier to with this 60 percentage. Okay. That's very important to doing some onboarding easy tasks. For example, I'm uh, being in a company called Sompo Japan insurance maybe you have in india too sompa japan and they may please take a screenshot from here too and go give some example to sompa japan uh, insurance we do it in in team they have a eight team in turkey like you know buildings like cars like um health insurance or something like that it's going on boarding and when the month starts they go from go to the island part okay and as you can see who uh, bring uh, who bring this island first they have uh, that badge okay so and if one of them their friends are not logging the board are not leaving the beach this is very important onboarding techniques okay 
the one of their friends are not enter the portal, they both are not leaving the beach. And they can, who going to first island first, they can choose their rewards. Like day of like um, oil, like, I don't know, some e-commerce tickets, something like that. So like here, uh, one of my friends, limitation of your gamification design is should be not your technology should be your imagination okay that's very important for my side too and let's let me give you another 10 minutes if you like to do that don't think about games only games for example i like to give an example from fifa 2 discovery who is going to be at, at the poster you know messi or ronaldo or uh, salah who you know discovery what are new game mechanics what are the new rules these are discovery you are not playing the games you are just wondering about discovery what about onboarding when you enter the fifa you have to collect your profile you are doing some exercise okay finding your friend not playing it just very basic things okay what about the habit building let me do some enemy find an enemy and beat him and let's go to the online and find not my friends and all over the world. Okay, what about the mastery? Just call when you come to your friends, you are doing some team building and helping them. Let's make a team building, you know, let's create a team together. You know, I am a holy level. I like to share my knowledge. I like to give some hand to you. Okay, this is a very typical from phases from, you can imagine rock guitar hero, rock hero, this kind of every games, has their own phases, four phases. But you can find from a buying a house, you know, like I told you, having a cat or even having a boyfriend or girlfriend, okay? Discovery, onboarding, habit building. What about second time, you know, having lunch together with her, something like that. What about the mastery, you know? She's good, what about, <laughs> she's good. What about having a daughter or something like that? Yeah, please create a four phases from your real life because it's very important to understand it's not about giving points and badges okay if you think about four level that will be a help for us and i will give you um right now yeah 10 15 minutes okay and let me put this to the here and if you want to dive into you can go to visit game thinking io2 
nothing sunny. I mean, uh, yes, uh, maybe we can have some someone else, and uh, you can share maybe from him after him. Is there anyone else like to share his player journey with something? It's like I told you, a buy a car or a download the app. Um, please have increase your hand or open your mic. Who wants to share? Anyone? Can I hear? I hear something. Who opened his mic? Project, you're on mute. <laughs> it's typical. Now. Yeah, that's that's the slogan for 2020, isn't it? You're on mute. Go on, Said, uh, my All friend. Right. Uh, yeah, so I, I can share an example of, uh, I'm a part of Atlassian community. So I, I joined the community leadership program somewhere around in 2018. And uh, that, that started, that's when I came to know about the program. I have been working in the Atlassian tools for two, three years before that as a user. And uh, I joined the community in 2018. I got my official onboarding. So the entire process is very gamified. You get points every time you post on the community, every event you host. So I and Deepti are co-leaders for the Delhi community. So every time you host some events, you get some points. And uh, you know, at the end of the year, there's a there's a there's a there's a calculation worldwide that is done for all the cities that have Atlassian community, and there's a leaderboard that is published. So over, over the last two two and a half three years now, like. I personally have grown in my stature in the community as well. We started with, you know, normal uh, entry level, qualified for being leaders. Then it, it kind of became a habit that how active you are in the community, you're hosting content, you're hosting events, you're inviting speakers, and all of that were giving us points, so giving the Delhi community those points. It has turned into a point that it actually became a habit that you wanted to learn so that you'll grow your stature in the community. And now both Deepti and I and the third co-leader we have, we've, we've attained that status that in the community, like, you know, we are considered as subject matter experts. We have a very active WhatsApp group. I have every other day, I have one or the other members of the community reaching out to me uh, for questions. There are KPIs as a leader that we have, you know, there are some set of rules and regulations that we have to follow and they're like a specific set of events have to happen. Uh, you know, these amount of posts you need to do, these amount of questions you need to answer. So our, you know, we've, we've grown from a normal in the early onboarding days in the last two, two and a half years to now where we are considered masters of, you know, that using those Atlassian tools. Great, great example. And totally agree. The example. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Is there anyone else? The second one, or we can go for Sunny. Anyone else wants to share their player journey? Who likes to share the four phases, for example, uh, for player journey? I think we okay. had someone. I can go in. <laughs> uh, this is Deep Pierre. Thank, Thank you. you. Go uh, on. So this was this was our experience in my uh, in my one of my previous organizations, and uh, this was when uh, we were starting a new product, uh, and uh, this was a huge product which had to be delivered in a span of one and a half years. So it was an education domain. So 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 initially when we got started, we were all uh, you know we will be delivering it in agile and Scrum and everything. But but when the team started, it was a huge team. It was um, uh, it was a team member of around 40 people. And when we started, uh, we didn't know how to write user stories. We didn't know how to deliver. The sprints kept on spilling. We had a hard time convincing the customers that, uh, you know, uh, we are sorry, we are not able to deliver at the end of two weeks that we had thought. But then, um, we all got together, spent some time. Um, the management team, that's me and my development manager, we sat down with the clients that you would have to help us write down user stories because this is your product. That is why we will, uh, we will be able to deliver it. And my team also was like, 
we planned it that way and we said okay this is what we need to do we need to sit down have a sprint planning done very well uh, retrospectives did not come to us very easily those were the last thing we kind of uh, uh, took hold of but but we started with sprint planning we started delivering small small steps and and then it just became a habit we just set in uh, it, it was like one day sprint planning is not helping and then we set up things like okay every day for 30 minutes we will do uh, just user stories uh, for next sprint for upcoming work based on what we are delivering now um, and and then we mastered the arts and every two weeks we were delivering stuff to the client you know getting it deployed on their on their uh, beta servers where they could test and give us feedback giving them continuous uh, demos and and then it was in our habit it was not done in a day. It was not done by one person, but it was done by whole team together. Uh, the code was being designed, being developed, being tested and deployed within a span of two weeks. And it was a good chunk that was being delivered. We divided our teams, um, brought the sprint planning into picture very, very well, um, embraced things. Uh, it was like 10 minutes stand up and it has to be 10 minutes stand ups, no side talks um, and, and retros. As I said, that was the last thing that we mastered because every two weeks it was very difficult for team to come out with what we did well and what we can do better. But, but then team kind of mastered it. And yeah, and, and we delivered that product from inception to ideation within the time with, with huge accolades. So yeah, that's, that has been a great journey for us, for me personally, because I was involved right from beginning till the end. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing. That was great. I mean, uh, please take a note for Amy Jo Kim names. She's a, a professor at Stanford Business School and she is lecturing there. Uh, actually, it, it's more important that she is creating very good content in online. And I have been her in boot camp in pandemic. And right now she's doing lots of lecturing in Clubhouse. And she got a lesson today too. And she's great for not only this uh, player journey and also the sharing her knowledge uh, because she is doing a consultancy for games, real game companies like Ubisoft, uh, like EA Sports. And also she is doing helping uh, some gamification companies like Happy Fire or Duolingo, uh, kind of a real Silicon Valley uh, companies too. So she's good at this uh, player journey and it's a good open-minded examples for you to understand what is the player journey. So let me uh, finish uh, my late uh, example, the journey. Actually, we create a journey, but what about the hero's journey? I mean, the, um, we need some uh, triggers and information for our journey. I always use um, post it, it in include the online. I use Miro, maybe you heard Miro, but there are many tools to create this kind of tools. You can use even Keynote or PowerPoint too, it doesn't matter. It is just it just seems that the journeys. So we need to be triggered and remind the people, hey, are you ready to do this? Are you ready to make another sales? These are all triggers. So we need to think about what are the triggers. For example, if you have a seat on a car, if you're not seat belt, you know, it makes noise. That's a trigger. And if if you have a phone, it's ringing, it's another actually uh, some triggers so we need to create some trigger for our journey to create some updates and we need to find pain points and put some pleasure points to there you know what about for example give cards forgetting the give cards forgetting to enter the information to the sierra just before his leave you know and he's open close to something like that ask a question do you like to have a smile emoji please collect this this is a second step example, for example. This is a real life example from an ING bank from Turkey, which we did actually a journey like this in online. So we try to be create some example, like a leaderboard. You know, leaderboard has many parameters, okay? Many parameters. It's not easy thing to create. It could be 
a by time, it could be by team, it could be by division, it could be by organizational types, it could be by title, it could be by effort league, like Champions League, you know, Goldens. What about the leaderboard? Depends what? First questions. Okay. Daily quiz. It could be it related to job trigger. We have a question for you, Sunny. What kind of question? You should think about it. Okay. It could be related to job. It could be related to company. Who is the CEO's daughter's name? Kind of. How many workers we have in average in the store? It could be just for fun, like a Guinness World Records. Who is the um, oldest person? Which com which country he lives? Something like that. Or is even a general culture? You know, uh, when Turkey founded and with whom? Kind of is a general general culture. What is the Mars? Uh, um, found it, something like that. So even daily quiz can be triggered, but what kind of question at day one? Think about the phases, you know, onboarding, we are going to ask CEOs, the other name, kind of companies, but second day they birth. So we started to ask questions like Guinness World Records. Think about rewards. What about the onboarding rewards? What about the mastery reward? Could be charity, could be surprise, even not seeing the reward. They can collect the rewards. Check your email for your reward. Thanks for collecting points, something like that. Or Zoom, Zoom with CEO or having the mentoring a very popular people from company. Okay, these are interesting rewards, but do not um, use in on onboarding. Use in mastery level or habit building, Zoom with CEO or charity. At the beginning, you can use extrinsic with coupon, with uh, increasing something like that. So I'm going to give an example for a subs model. And we are going to think about um, interesting rewards. You can use stuff, you know, a pen with his name, a pen with his name, a notebook with company logo, okay? These are stuff, actually, a good rewards, but you can use on the phases, okay? What about the power? Have, a, have effect to others you know, have effect to others. Like I'm giving a word to you. You can use some avatar and showing, decide uh, which games we are going to play. It has to be affect the other players. This is another level of interesting rewards, okay? The access, um, have another test source, for example, or um, uh, knowing, or accessing early the some sprint version the, of software, you know, you are not open the software. Everyone just open this guy, okay, and have a status with that, like a agile coach is a status, or scrum master is a status, or test hero is a status, and give his power, give his stuff, give him access, give his certificate. So these are all interesting, create an interesting motivation to use Gabe Zickerman subs rewarding model. Please note of that. Actually, this is very important for us, but I'm going to not make this example, but I'm going to talk about core loop. So this is a interesting rewards, but we need to create some loops, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you enter the game design domain and gamification design domain, you have to well known with game core loop. What is that? What is the trigger? What is the behavior? What is the reward? Hey, uh, Sunny, do you like to have this badge? Yes, go and update your profile. I updated, congratulations, you have this badge and put into your profile. This is very typical things we are doing, but I'm going to show you um, and hook model. Maybe you heard hook model in English too, uh, but it's very important for me to show you the hook model from near AI. Uh, in gamification design, for our game gamification uh, experience, we always use this model called hook model. Let me show you the um, example, and I want to be, have you to understand what is hook model. Let's start to have your phone. Please take with you to phone and open the push notifications, okay? 
I am going to open the push notification. And if you are not on this training, if you are not on this training, which push notification you are going to choose? For example, I have a mention in Twitter, okay? Trigger, someone mention you. I very wonder about it. Let me open it, open. It's opening. What about action? That was a click. Variable reward is going to be who mentioned me. As you can see, someone answered me. This is my Twitter and someone answered me. Okay, I'm going to go there and doing a like. I read it. This is a investment to do this guy, Party Shanyut. You know, he answered very long, as you can see. But I read it or retweeted or given another answer to him. This is the investment. This is very typical in our gamification design. What is trigger? A push notification, an email, an intrinsic motivation. What happened to my uh, journey, for example? What happened to my friend? Then action, reward, seeing what is the answer. Then investment to do him, okay? So this is our last exercise. I want to create a hook model with four level, as you can see from here, with your phone. Please find a trigger. Please find the trigger from your phone. It could be email too. It could be a WhatsApp too. What you gave it, it's a behavior. It's a behavior action. What you see there actually is a very variable reward. Okay, it could be a game too. Okay. Then what you give him, it's very important for depends to near AI investment actually what we found in Silicon Valley and what we find in digital experience design. Normally trigger action and reward has a training for uh, animals in, in circle, something like that, you know, in, in reward food, something like that. But if you can find an investment, then people can revisit you. Then people not delete your phone, delete from your day of phone, investment, okay? The like is in most moments write an answer and investment. So I give you 10 minutes to create this hook because this hook model is going to be working like an experience journey in every level. I'm going to give a homework for you, one hook model for every phases, then it will be gamification design. So please write for example from your phone, as I just read, what is the push notification, what you did, what you see is reward and what you give the application. Okay, just 10 minutes. Uh, hi, Erkin. Yeah, we have 10 minutes for a time box. I just wanted to let you know.
So last one minute. We have to rush. Who is ready? It's not easy to find and realize your own hooked. Okay, it's not easy. Uh, but uh, what you are entered the domain of the game design, we are just creating these loops. Okay, trigger, action, reward, and investment. Do more. Make a promise. I will come visit tomorrow. This kind of investment is very important for us to collect hook model. Sunny, my friend. As I see, you've done. Sure. You can sure, go okay. for. Go on. So uh, the moment I checked my phone, I saw that there was uh, an uh, invitation from someone from the uh, group itself on LinkedIn. So someone viewed my profile and sent an invitation okay. for LinkedIn. So this was the investment done by the person. Right. Okay. So uh, what was the variable reward for me that uh, there's a chance for networking and my name is there. I mean, uh, someone visited my profile. So the action I took on uh, for that particular notification, I clicked on that notification. And the, the last point will be the trigger. So I accepted the uh, uh, request. I accepted the invitation of, so I'm a friend of someone from this particular group only on LinkedIn. That's great. That's well done. I think not every hook is uh, not uh, bad. I think hook model for LinkedIn is great, but hook model for Instagram, sometimes it makes cost us too much money. <laughs> I don't use Instagram and Facebook nowadays. I've That's stopped using well it. Well done for you. I love your draw. Please uh, share and mention me on Twitter that we can uh, follow everyone and see the examples of what you are great did already and um, let me give you my twitter profile sure, um, i'll do that also you can yeah also you can add a linkedin too so cool. let me put in here to my twitter and this is my email and let me wrap up um, what we just did actually all together and try to define your persona Create a compelling experience, try to create a feeling, a player journey experience to them and trick them in this journey. So find and create hook model for discovery, hook model for onboarding, hook model for mastery, habit building. Okay. And create and decide that which persona is going to be do that. If you have a three persona, create by times three. Okay four times it means that if you can able to create these journeys all together then you started to do very well gamification designing with players persona phases the player is going to be phases and how you can trick them and trick them with the hook model and that was actually how you introduce the gamification design uh, with the game mechanics then you can add game dynamics over there you don't have to use points you don't have to use badges if you need that you can use in your journey to show the mastery you know but you have to think about this all phases personas uh, these are all you know when our moms i know that indian food is great too but turkish turkish food also too too our moms has a, some um, notebooks while they are doing something like that uh, we call it Tarif, you know, Tarif is very, is co coming from Ottoman, still Turkish ladies are reading this Tarif to, to create some kebabs and good food. So these are all Tarif for our gamification design. You have to be careful about that, but you can put your creativity on that too. Okay, so 